Yo, 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 we live on location. City Beautiful is the location. Me and the blackest one, we got a very special guest. Straight up a Marlboro, Maryland's own. We got the DMV in the building, y'all. Yeah. Number one pick. He took it all the way from the East Coast to the West Coast to Washington University. We got young Markel Foltz in the building, Ball ladies and gentlemen. Sir. We appreciate you, appreciate man. You. Thank you Orlando man. Magic's own. Man, we appreciate you coming on the show. Been a big fan of yours since Washington. That's when I really got up on you. My homeboy put me up on you. I remember I seen you at the game and I was telling you I was a big fan of your game. Nah, that's an honor. I appreciate y'all having me, for real. When you first got to the league, who was the first person to bust your ass? Probably John Wall. John Wall. This was Washington Wizards, John yeah. Wall. Yeah. And that was my Fast first game, up. yeah, my first game at home too. It was in DC. I was about to say, that's back at the crib. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's some game. bullshit. So, that was probably first time, like just realizing the speed was different, the handle, everything. But it was fun though, it still was, you know, competitive, but he was probably the first one that, he shook me a few times. I was like, all right. Like, real yeah, 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 I gotta wake my ass up for real, but. Man, he a big guard yeah, too. Yeah, yeah, like, So it was strong. perfect for me, but that was probably first game, yeah. Yeah, wow. Well, yep. At the crib. Oh, I know that whole family. <laughs> yeah, is yeah. Like, you got yeah. a hundred deep yeah. in the building. Yeah. <laughs> you out here going crazy. Yeah. Upper Marlboro, Maryland. Yep. Tell us about um, some of the history you remember of uh, Maryland, I mean, mm -hmm. Maryland area, the uh, DMV, like, because uh, they got a rich history of ballers, yeah. you know, so. Tell us some, like, some of the history DMV. that you remember coming up and, you know, the ones that came before you. A lot, man. Just even through my high school, Keith Bogans, you know, Adrian oh. Danley, uh, a lot of guys. Tight. Yeah, you know, Victor Oladipo, the Grants, you yeah. know. So, like, not only just there, but you just got a lot of guys. And you got guys that still didn't even make it to the pros that still did, you know, a lot of good things. You know, Josh Selby, uh, mm -hmm. Kill Carr, Selby. you know. Selby was cool. It was like, so it was kind of dope just to see that. And it was like, also being in DMV, you had a lot of, Places like Baltimore, you're close, you know, so it was kind of, everybody had their different kind of style, but like still kind of supported each other in a way. But, uh, you know, it was just dope to have to prove yourself wherever you went. It was like, they didn't care who you was, no matter the biggest name or not. If you came to the, the park, they treat you like you nobody. So it was like, you kind of had to earn your respect everywhere you went. So it was kind of just like, you it know. It was gritty. Yeah. I fuck with it. So it was kind of like, it, just, it. it made you like have to earn it, you know, and it just gave you a different perspective of like, you know, basketball. For it to be Maryland, DC, and Baltimore. Like how how is like you know, cause folks rep they yeah, <laughs> rep they yeah. rep. So how is that to 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 be all in one? Cause I know when y'all when hey you when you travel when yeah. we seen DC assault, yeah. it was like all of them together. But how is it in in, in the city where you repping your side? You know, there's some people don't like it. They're like, don't, don't, don't say we were DC. But it's like when you leave, you know, it's it's a joint, yeah. it's a joint thing. But while like, you're there, that's you, how it was at yeah, night. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was like, man, I ain't from no <laughs> DC, yeah, man. Yeah, yeah. Like, like, hey, we don't say we West, from there. <laughs> yeah, so like, it's kind of like that. Like you, you understand when you at home, you gotta rep where you at, and then like when you leave, it's like one big. Yeah, it's one big thing. Yeah. It's like we all just got, oh no, nah. yeah. when we in Chicago, yeah. I'm South Side, exactly. you West Side, you this, but yeah. when we go somewhere else, it's Chi Town. Yeah, what exactly. you talking about? Exactly. What made you choose the math out of all the schools in DC? What made you choose the math to go to and, you know, continue their legacy? All right, I actually got, I didn't even get recruited there. I, I used to go to camp there a lot. Mm -hmm. um, I went to a lot of camps in the area, but that was a private school. I, I was in public school pretty much, elementary and middle school. Uh, my mom wanted me to, go to a private school pretty much to help me just lock in really. Um, and I applied for a whole bunch of different, you know, uh, private schools all around the area. And DeMatha was actually one of the ones that accepted me. So it was like, kind of like I wanted to go there. Cause of course, you know about the legacy there. And, and I knew that, you know, that was somewhere that I wanted to be. So once I got accepted, it pretty much was almost done then. Um, I, I ended up going there. It wasn't close to my house either. It was probably mm -hmm. like a, almost like an hour commute. Like, Damn. Yeah, so, so you went there, you went there, Three years, four years? Four years. And Man, I didn't I didn't get recruited. I played freshman. 
I played JV. Yeah. And so, like, I went through the whole process. It's it like a grind. I almost wanted to leave my sophomore year when I got cut, but, you know, my mom made me stick it through. You know, she made me see the bigger picture as far as, like, starting something and, and not giving up. So, uh, end up working all, all the way out. I end up, you know, killing my junior year. Yeah. And Did you get cut sophomore year from varsity? Yeah, from play, varsity and played JV. Yeah. JV. I ended up getting moved up at the end of the year because I was just dominating JV, JV. but, you know, the math is a big powerhouse. There's a lot of a lot of guys there, and I really wasn't like recruited. So like, I mean, I busted my ass and I did what I had to do. But you know, they you know they had guys there that you know they already had yeah, it's a on the roster. You know, so yeah, it's a program. I, I went through the I, I went through the process, but it all made it worth it. It showed me just how to work hard and for something that you want. But it ended up working out. You know, I ended up killing uh, my junior year and went and played at a conference in, in that conference, and then my senior year doing the same thing and dominating, and then going to Washington. So. It worked out. How was it for you to just bust, bust through it? Like, like you don't play your freshman year. Most of the guys get discouraged if they're not already the man or they're not close to being a man. You know what I'm saying? So you don't play your freshman year. You don't play your sophomore year in on the varsity level because you no know, JV don't count yeah. to, to us. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Them numbers that you put up, they don't really go towards your senior. I mean, or your varsity type yeah. numbers if you don't play all four years. To bust through the scene and you were seeing what's ahead of you, like you seeing the good, the better teams. You was, I know you was going to all the varsity yeah, games yeah, yeah. and watching them play. <laughs> yeah. So for this to bust through your junior year to get on that level, like how was that to transition to that for you? It was dope. It, it happened really fast, but uh, it was also dope because you know the work that I was putting in was showing very fast. So it made me even more hungrier to keep working because I was seeing results. You know quickly so I understood like while I'm working on something and if I'm being coachable and somebody tells me to work on something and I do it and then I see the results right away it's almost like why would I stop so I kept doing it and I kept getting better and I kept getting better and I kept getting opportunities to play against the best players in the country and I kept proving myself every ch time I got a chance to do that so like it was almost like it was a type of like addiction that I had to just continue to prove people wrong and also like work my ass off to get what I wanted and I just kept doing that. So, like, that whole junior year, it was just, like, I got opportunity after opportunity to play against, you know, the best player I played against, Jason Tatum, I played yeah. against, you know. I know the math to play everybody. Yeah, we they played play all, all around. So, like, yeah. it was also, like, just a showcasing of me, you know, everywhere, and everybody's like, where did he come from? You know, this guy came from nowhere, and it, it just kept going. I just want to say something. For all the young people, young players, anybody that just out there is going to be watching this, Please pay attention to the context clue. That man said he was extremely coachable and he worked his ass off. Yeah. Extremely coachable and worked his ass off. Go ahead. The Matha is a real program. Yeah. Like, we got drafted in the 2000. The Matha been a program since early yeah, 90s. Time. Like, yeah. a real yeah. program. And you go through a process and it's it's bigger than one player. Absolutely. You know what I'm saying? Over the years, over the eras. How did that help you out too, to be in a real program? Because a lot of guys don't come up in programs. Yeah. They play with guys and they just be like, oh, we got a good team <laughs> yeah. this year or this <laughs> decade. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It was big. It taught me how to play basketball the right way. But also, I think that's just the DMV area is just kind of like that. Like, the way they play basketball is kind of just the right way. It's not like you know, a guy go get yours. It's about, you know, team basketball and understanding defense and how to run an offense. But like you said, like, they've been competing for a long time. So, like, you also understand how to put yourself aside for a bigger picture because bigger it's part. not saying that necessarily, like, you're not talented enough to be able to do these things, but understanding that uh, everybody has a role to a bigger picture. So, uh, I easily learned that, and I had teammates on my team. We had a, a whole lot of fun doing that and understanding that, you know, we all are talented in our own ways, but if we tie together in certain ways, like you play your best defense, I pass the best way I can, you shoot, nobody can beat us. So it was it was kind of dope, and it showed me a way to play basketball and understanding, you know, there there's a right way to play basketball and there's a way Strategy. to just, yeah, just yeah. to go hoop, so. I don't know if you look at it like this or not, but, like, to be a guy that, like you said, you – Play freshman, play JV, then finally broke through as a as soon as you got the junior year, you the player of the year in the conference, mm -hmm. and then you set the school record for assists. That's only in two years. Mm -hmm. Like when you look back at that, what does that say to you about you know what I'm saying like the work that you were putting putting in, how hard you went and everything, and does it make it 
show you that like, yeah, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, regardless of what everything, you got cut. You yeah. know what I'm saying? You came back from all of that stuff and did what you did. What does that say about the work that you put in and the, and the foundation you built from those from those failures or whatever? I don't really think there's a such thing as failure. I feel like you can learn from everything that, that happens in your life. And I also understand that, like, like I said, anything's possible if you put the work in, you know? And I believe that I'm blessed in, in many ways, but... uh I just it just shows that if you put the work in that you can do anything you put your mind to really you know and that's all I did you know it might not happen right away it might take a little bit of time but I believe I always believe in the work and, and it always shows so um, I think it just shows the resilience and something that like I'm not worried about the results right away I'm really worried about the process and, and what I'm doing it and how I do it to get nationally recognize you know it's, it's hard enough we got to be try to be the man of our city or the man of our state to get nationally recognized and you being like I say two years of varsity your senior year I know it was like at full force how was that to just see your name attached to some of the guys that you seen in your class that was always there from yeah, freshman yeah, year and stuff all. like that <laughs> but you get the opportunity yeah. you hear the McDonald's and you hear this it was it was dope, but was the job moment. yeah yeah the job wasn't done though. I was never satisfied because I I still believed that I was the best player in the world and I wanted to be number one. Mm -hmm. So like I feel like I didn't get a a full opportunity to show that because I only had two years. Yeah, so yeah. the high I think the highest I got moved up was number seven. Um, but I was still happy with that. You know I, I think that it was I still had more work to do. I still you know. I wasn't done, you know, I was still sad. I was still hungry to keep going, but definitely was like, again, more motivation and it just made me feel good about the work that I was putting in. It wasn't like I was just working and like, I didn't see any results. It was, it felt good to actually put in work and then to see other people believe what I already believed. It just made my confidence go even higher. At the end of your senior year, right, you, you, you racked up so many accolades, average 22, set school record, Maryland player of the year, All-American, Jordan Brand, uh, was the MVP of the, the USA FIBA championship, was that like the biggest award you think that you like, or was that like the biggest feat you think you accomplished that year? I think that probably when they started considering me number one in uh, as far as mock drafts and everything. And it was kind of dope because I'm younger than almost everybody in my class. Mm -hmm. So that USA year, I actually played with, with kind of like Trey Young was on my team, mm -hmm. uh, Michael Porter. I had a few guys in my class like Jared Allen. Um, but it was kind of like kind of the younger guys in, in the class below me. So it was kind of like it was kind of dope because it was almost like I was playing my regular age kind of. But I, I still felt like that was like the moment where everybody kind of recognized because that was also my first time getting a chance to play for a gold medal as well. Mm -hmm. So it was like, it was just a very dope experience. I do think that was the biggest, probably the biggest award I had because that was right before college as well. Like after that, I went straight to, to college. I did the same thing. I went with that same USA mm -hmm. team and we went to uh, Dominican Republic. Mm -hmm. to, how did that feel for you to win that gold medal? Cause I remember like, I don't even think at the time I knew it was as big as it was because it was just like, you know, you so young yeah. and, and you green, you don't know what the hell <laughs> is going on. You just like, we about to kick everybody yeah. ass and it's a regular tournament. Yeah. But like looking back at it, like I never got to play for another USA team. Mm -hmm. And like, I still got that net. I still got that gold medal. And like, that's like, I was a real Olympic champion. Yeah. Like that's the only time I got a chance to be that. So for you, did you look at it like that back then? Or you just looking at it now? Like that was a bigger deal than I really thought it was. Nah, it, I look at it now as it's a way bigger deal. Back Back then it was more like a business, you know, yeah, business thing. Like you know, a transaction. Just, exactly. I'm just I'm just going to kill everybody. I'm trying to win, yeah, and improve yeah, myself. Yeah. You know, so it was like I, when I got gold, I was don't get me wrong, I was happy and I and I understood, yeah. you know, what I was doing, but I didn't I didn't look at it as big as I do now. Like I definitely appreciate it way more, and I'm yeah. I'm very thankful for that opportunity. But back then it was just business, you know, going to do what I had to do. Facts. Yeah. Uh, could have been anybody else, uh, but Washington. Like could anybody else? Was it anybody else uh, that almost got you? Yeah, it was a few. That's it was the other a few. Side of the country. It was a few. And you chose to go from one end all <laughs> yeah, to the other. Man, it, was, it, was a, it was a lot of reasons for that, man. I think the biggest for that was Romar. 
Coach Romar, he was a little Romar, guy, man. man. He he was dope. And then the, the team they had there, like they had Dejounte Murray, Marquise Chris, yeah. uh, Matisse Thybul, who they have, Dom Green, Damn. David. But that was, that, yeah, yeah, but they had I didn't all even them. Realize that. But Dejounte and Marquise went to the draft. They yeah. they ended up going to the draft, okay, so they so left. So I didn't get a chance to play with them. But I wasn't mad at you know they did what they had to do. So yeah. Yeah. and I just stuck again. I stuck it out. I didn't. Yeah, yeah, so, <laughs> so that was, they that's didn't why know I was, that. I'm yeah, like, wait, I missed y'all play yeah, together. Like, okay, even, they didn't play. They okay. didn't even know. Like that was a big reason because I was like, you know, underdog. Nobody gonna really expect Washington really like. But y'all did some yeah, shit we with been that crazy. Group, yeah, yeah, so but it didn't end up working out. But I, I was considering Arizona, Louisville, Kentucky, those mm-hmm. teams. But like it came down to like when I was with the team, Washington, like the players all got along. But they they competed their ass off and probably like damn they wanted to kill each other. But off the court they were. Got along and then Coach Romar as a coach, it was like, yeah, it was no one better than that. As far yeah, as like, Romar was yeah, he wanted coach. me to be a man. Like he, mm-hmm. it was more about like my family and everything more than just basketball. So that that made it easy for me to know that my mom wouldn't have to worry when I'm gone. I'm tell you this story about Coach Romar. Uh, it's funny. He was he was a St. Louis U coach. Mm-hmm. So he used to have his recruits come in and he used to have them stand under the gold and stuff. And he used to come up and be like, "Man, you think you can block my layup?" And I and I'm looking at him like I'm six nine and I'm like man I send that shit to like the, <laughs> the, the 30th row right, but this was back when them legs was still yeah. still right. Yeah. Had like so nice I'm standing on the knees. goal like you know he getting the run and starting. I'm standing on the goal. Boy, he came in and as soon as he got close to the goal, he went full speed and almost dunked it, hit the back of the rim and came out. I said, yes, Lord. Cause how the fuck I'm gonna let the coach dunk on me? And I'm like, no. What a surprise, yeah, hell out he, to- he used to do, and he was like, man, I got so many players and I dunked on yeah. so many players. That's so funny. Of, of using that. But I know he was kind of older, so he yeah. probably nah, he used to do he used to do his shooting stuff like crazy trick shots. He yeah, still, he loved hoop though. He man. almost dunked yeah, on me, and I was I'm so that happy that he did. Shout out Coach Romar, yeah. man, that was my guy, man. <laughs> <laughs> but he almost boom. Damn, man, I wish you that's, a, that's a good <laughs> that's a good trick <laughs> though. Right I'm about to start now. using that. Yeah, yeah that's he a good just trick. Had me standing up there like, yeah, you think he's funny? Beat this layup. So I'm thinking he coming in with an easy layup. He tried to dunk that. So I dunk that thing over. But when you got to Washington, you know, you, you leave all the way from D.C., come all the way across dead. the country. Going across country. To I Washington. Tight and, and if you ain't ready for rain, yeah, you, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> like, I mean, Washington I was kind of used to the rain because in D.C. we get a little bit of everything. Snow, yeah, you get rain, all the weather. To me, actually, it was kind of it was kind of good for me because I didn't want to be home. I yeah. feel like, it, you know, if I was home, too many people would be grabbing Not at me and everything. On. So it was kind of like a fresh start. And again, like going that far, it it didn't really feel like going away because of the love out there, man. I had Jamal Crawford showing mad love, yeah. IT, Spencer, all those guys. You know, Seattle shows mad love, and then Romar made it feel like feel like home. But it definitely was a different experience. But I was loving it, you know, going be yeah. being by myself uh, right. out there with that. Like yeah. I wasn't tripping. I was out there just doing my thing, locked in. But it was a little period, probably when I first got out there, that it was kind of like. I miss my family, but my mom and sister used to come out there and surprise me all the time. So it was kind of dope. Like oh, yeah, it was dope. enough time alone, but they used to come every once in a while to come see me. So it was almost like that first time being on my own, just being like, you know, grown. You're going from Maryland to uh, Seattle, but the basketball culture out there. Yeah. Like like how the culture is from like the Jamal's, the guys that, and all the guys that go to, to uh, to Washington yeah. and 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 have that basketball co- uh, culture like on the program yeah, level all and yeah. all around that you, you the crossover you, you, that yeah, you wouldn't dope. know that was out there yeah. before you got out there. So yeah. how was that? To, you get out there and you just see a whole nother world and you see ballers yeah. out there. <laughs> I think that was another reason I went to UW. You know they used to send mail and like they used to send all the pros they had. And I'm just looking like, damn, I ain't even know Nate Rod. Yeah. You know, T. Roten, uh, T. Ross. Yeah. It was just like, damn, like, I didn't even know they had that many Hoopers. And then just going out there and seeing how how many of them come back. And like you said, they got all their crossover leads. They got, you know, they just come play pickup. Like, on my visit, I was up there just wanted to hoop, and Jamal pulled up. It was a whole bunch of guys that, like, I did not expect to, like, just yeah. come and just be cool and just play pickup. So it was like the culture out there is real dope. And, again, I got a chance to 
I'm with Paula right now, but so I already know kind of how like the Seattle like they just got hoopers, man. The yeah. way they hoop is it was kind of dope coming from the DMV because it's like almost kind of the same thing. You just got guys that just want to go play pickup, want to go hoop. So like it was just all love out there, and I I really appreciate Seattle, and I I look forward to you know making it back out there. In Washington, you were swerving out there. Yeah. Like that's when I that's when my, my boy didn't put me up on you, and I'm like. You get buckets <laughs> out there, boy. Yeah. You going Came to work now. Nowhere. When you when you got out there and 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 playing in the what's that? Pac twelve. The Pac twelve. Yeah, yeah, playing in the Pac twelve and and doing your thing with the competition of UCLA and all them. Like, how did you feel yourself when you you really got there and, and kind of got your feet on the ground and it started was swerving? Crazy. Like that's probably the the. When I like riding a high, that probably was the the best I best felt, you know, because it was like almost like my, I remember my first game. I think I had thirty, and it was like I felt like I didn't even have a good game. Like it was just like I look at the end of the game, I look up and I'm like, damn, I had thirty, and it's like <laughs> I didn't really think. I'm like, damn, that was kind of easy. Like yeah. next game, thirty five. I'm like, all right, like this, I might really be doing something. Like just keep doing what I'm doing. Can't be easy. Yeah, man. And I'm <laughs> talking my trash and practice, you know, but I'm still putting the work in. Like, don't get me wrong. I'm working my ass off, but I feel like it was still opportunities where I could have, you know, scored more and did other things. But me being who I am, you know, still trying to get my teammates involved and stuff like that. But it was like, I was just having fun and, and dominating the game of basketball. And it was like, the only thing that sucked was the wins. You know, I didn't get yeah, that many yeah. wins. So like, that was kind of a thing that I didn't like hearing because it almost made it seem like I wasn't, you know, a Doing winning that, player, yeah. you know? And and that's all I care about is winning. How did Coach Romar help you deal with that? Because I know he was a great, like, mentor-type yeah. dude, and I know he helped you deal with that. I mean, shoot, he just kicked our ass in practice. <laughs> 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 we used to be running so much. You're like, he ain't going to do one thing. You're going you're gonna to be running. But he just stayed on – I mean, he knew I was a, a guy that, that was doing whatever I could to win, and he tried to put us in the best positions, you know, but – uh, again, if I could go back, it'd probably be times that I could have been more aggressive to help our team win and things like that. But I don't, I wouldn't change anything about college. You know, I really enjoyed it, and I think I, I enjoyed, you know, the chemistry I had with my teammates. I, I think they would say like, I was probably one of the dopest dudes. You know, I wasn't a typical, probably guy that's probably gonna be a high pick that walked around like he was right. all that. You know, I'm a normal guy, Just kicked it with everybody, chilled with everybody, made everybody seem special. When you came in after everything that you, you know, achieved as a senior, did you expect to be that successful and to have a chance to be like, you know, a top five, top ten pick or anything? Like I know, you know, a lot of us, some of us come in thinking like, hey, mm -hmm. sh about to kick everybody's yeah. ass, nobody good. Like did you walk in like that or did you come in kind of like, all right, I got to see what it's, what it's like. I got to feel my way through. Or how did you come in? And do I it? came in still with the same agenda. My goal is to be number one pick. Okay. And I, I've been saying that since I got, like, literally my boys in high school, I used to tell them, like, yo, I'm going to be the number one pick. Like, mm -hmm. I'm going to work my butt off to be the number one pick because I always felt like, you know, I was the best player in my class. And, like, that's just how I, I, I always felt and how it worked out, you know. Even if I wasn't there at that moment, like, that's my goal and that's where I want to be. So coming in, I definitely, you know, had thoughts of, like, all right, how hard is it going to be? Like, how's classes and stuff? How am I going? How's practice? This, that, and third. But it was always the the goal. Of, like, when I leave, I want to be known as the best player. You know, to come out of here and the best player on the floor. So that was my mindset every day. And and as I continued to go through the season, I felt you know the accolades coming and the work that I was putting in showing, and it, it just kept going from there. What made you decide like, to leave? Yeah, they fired Coach Romar. Mm. Uh, uh, we so had we Romar had our stage. You might have stayed. I might have stayed because I didn't want. We actually had the number one recruiting class coming in next year. We had like Michael Porter. Blake yeah, Harris, I remember that. Uh, yeah. We had a whole bunch of guys. But so is that why Porter went to uh, Missouri? Yeah, oh, yeah they really they, they flipped off yeah. the bag. Like so, like that? I mean, at the same time, I still had a, a a goal of leaving. But my mindset, like they had me projected number one. I was like. I'm number one in this class. I'm thinking like USA as well. I'm the class under me is coming to next. Why wouldn't I be able to be number one? But also I prayed about it and and something told me to do and and I'm glad I did because I ended up getting hurt the next year. So yeah. you know everything happens for a reason. But I definitely was thinking about coming back just because I didn't like winning nine. I won nine games in college. Right, like, right. <laughs> that like people be talking about March. I didn't get to play in March Madness. I didn't yeah. get to play in my Pac-12 tournament. You know, I was hurt at the end of the year. People thought I was sitting out because of, you know. Trying to get dressed. Yeah, yeah. but no, nah, I was just covering up my knee so I can get right. But, 
you know, that that was probably I was thinking about coming back, especially because I didn't want to leave Romar with, with no nine minutes, but they fired him and after that I was like, There's no way, I'm out. Yeah. Yeah. Now you hear you decide to go to the draft, you project it to be number one, something that you dreamed of your Top whole life. Top flight security mm-hmm. in the world, yeah. Craig. <laughs> All of us want to be the number yeah. one pick, you know. It's only one every year. Like, how, tell us about just the process of you hearing that and, and, and kind of, it's kind of feeding your ego. Like, man, I can be the number one pick and this is the reality now. Yeah, it was surreal. You know, just seeing mock drafts of it and just the process. I didn't really like look at it too much, but I definitely had people in my camp and people around me that always talked about it. But uh, just going through the whole process, just like the workouts and just, you know, the meetings and everything, it was just like, very exciting. Just one, because I'm going to get drafted whether I go one or not. So, right. like, I'm just super excited for that. But, like, the nerves are just hearing that you're going to go number one and the stories of, like, how they switch their picks and you never know <laughs> until it goes. So, like, I'm just, like, just waiting to hear it. You know, if, if I hear it, you know, I'm super excited. But just, like, one, I'm just blessed to be here and blessed to get drafted. Coming from nothing and being able to change my family life forever was dope. But once I heard it, it was, like, I ain't hear nothing else. It was just unreal. You know, you get an opportunity to shake, you know, the commissioner's hand and your family. Get you was with Stern still, right? No, no, no. Damn, yeah, Silver, yeah, yeah. he admitted he's silver, me. Yeah, yeah. yeah, Silver doing his thing. Yeah. Damn, you, six Just years. get an opportunity okay. for your, your mom and your family to, to get that whole experience. So how was the experience for you? And just tell us the process of, you know, yeah. choosing your suit. Yeah. And what you was going to wear. You my suit. ankles out, didn't you? Nah, I ain't had my ankles out. <laughs> Respect. Oh, Respect. You still I ain't had my ankles out. Yeah, I, I, did, I, did. I, I switched he it up. I actually, uh, my suit was dope. My suit, I got a little custom suit, like purple. Like, it was gray with, like, stripes and stuff. But in the inside, I had a whole bunch of pictures and stuff, like my family. But I think what I did unique was I was trying to figure out. I'm big on the shoes. Like, I didn't want to do nothing normal. I actually had a, my shoes made out of real basketball. But they were they was pretty dope. They was they was dope. I, I gotta see if I got a picture, but um I had my shoes made out of basketball, which was dope. You worked the purple for Washington? For yeah, the, yeah. Okay. Like it was great. It was mostly mostly gray, but it had like I gotta uh, figure out what's stretch. going on at University of Washington. They got like they get real love when yeah. like guys go there and like like nah, Paolo dope. didn't even go there. He wore a purple suit because yeah, his, his mom parent, and his daddy nah, and them and all it's, that. Like, it's a dope experience. I feel like it's just a combination because they don't really have no basketball team there no more. Mm-hmm. So like the love you get there is like Real. They love you like for real. Like mm, it's yeah. like I don't know. It's just like and they they kind of like, like the players laid went back. There, like Spence, yeah. ooh, Spence Halls, yeah. Nate. Like everybody's like revered yeah. there and like yeah. always like it's, it's mad it's, love. Like, a real love. <laughs> it's a dope Nate. experience. Like the and out there doing when the weather nice. It's like it's nice. It's nice to be out there. But that the whole draft experience was dope. I, it was different because I didn't think it was gonna be as long as it was. You know, watching the draft again. That's something I learned. Like watching it, you just see. You was the number one stage. pick, so it took a long time. Man, I, that's what I thought. I thought being number one pick, <laughs> yeah. you know, I'm gonna be able to get up out of there. I'm gonna be able to go party, chill. Yeah. <laughs> but I was still doing media. You know, that it was media. second round. It was still media. I had to tell them like, yeah. "Yo, I'm trying to go see my family." I was yeah. about to say, well, it wasn't. It, I can't even say it was like that for because it was long. But like now, two thousands, like mid almost twenties is. It's way more media just from the like. Yeah, it is way more. Cause we was, I was yeah. almost done, then they picked you. Yeah, yeah. that's when he had to go back to the car wash with me yeah. because he had to take the pictures with me. Yeah. But like, even with that, it don't sound like we was, we weren't there to the second round and yeah. I was the 18th pick. I was there the second yeah. round. Yeah, we was going. That's crazy for him to be the first pick and he's still there in the second round. And, and we, was, was, we was through probably, if not before, early into the second round, we was up out of there. Y'all leave the next day as well? Yeah, yeah, next morning we that's like the thing. Cleaned we leave up. the next day, so it was already like. So I uh, jump was in, but see y'all lucky. Y'all yeah. was in New York City. Yeah, I jump was in Minnesota. <laughs> yeah. It was Minneapolis. It wasn't New York City. It's like everybody, you six years that in the morning league, we done in though. the league. We all know that morning did come. Minnesota, <laughs> New York yeah, City. Yeah, we sure. know what would have been a time, and what sure. wasn't. I mean, it was still a time. Yeah. We had a time. Don't act like we ain't <laughs> have a time. And then we flew the next morning. I know you You flew to Philly. No, nah, we took a sprinter. When I really started paying attention to you and watching your game, I always liked the, how you play, your style of play. Mm-hmm. But some coaches, when they when they see a player, some, some coaches, it takes them a minute mm-hmm. to catch on. Did you have a problem with, with that, with like coming through? Coaches seeing you off the rip and be like, oh, I don't know. Yeah. And then when you actually play and do your thing, be like, oh, no, nah, that's one of my favorite. Yeah. Players, have you been getting that like? 
A hundred percent. I think Going that. I think year. that. I think that a lot of people, because of the internet, they you just hear stuff off the internet. Everybody believes what they see on the internet. Everybody so like, voice now. it's like, it's almost like it's crazy because it's like. I even had some of my own homies, even when the incident was going on in Philly, just asking like, yo, you got a motorcycle accident? I'm like, bro, you ain't never seen me drive no motorcycle, bro. Like, <laughs> I be in the gym, I chill. Like, I ain't never, like, so it's just like, it's kind of crazy, but like, yeah, that's what happens. And that's why I'm a firm believer. Like, I don't really care what people say until I meet somebody and I get to see for myself and, and give my own observation. But also like on the court, like you can say whatever you want, but I know what I can do. And I know mm -hmm. like and when I go out there, I'm going to kill. I'm a, I can hoop. So like, yeah. I'm always going to prove myself and I believe in the work that I put out. And like, that's why I feel like all real hoopers and all people that really know basketball understand and respect me. And that's all I can ask for. I'm not really worried about the people that, making bets and all that type of stuff or believe stuff because I know that, like, people that know hoop knows I'm valuable and know what I can do. Yeah. Because so. it, it, it gets like that when when with coaches. Like, you see some players and a coach is sitting here and, and, and if I have you out there doing drills and shit, you might look like shit to yeah. me. But when yeah. I put you on the court Situation. with five people, yeah. it's running up and down. Yeah. That's what it is. That's one thing, like, LaMelo Ball was one of them to yeah. me. You know what I'm saying? He's one of them people that, like, yeah, I don't, you can't put him, you got to kind of let him yeah. go. Yeah. And that's how I felt with you, yeah. too. I feel like they got to let you go and just kind of damn near be free yeah. to just do you, and you'll work it out. Yeah. Coming into that scenario in Philly where you got a city and a fan base that's outspoken mm -hmm. so to speak you know what i'm saying like so like the way they were how was it for you to to deal with all of this misinformation going around or going around and not really knowing the accuracy of what you got going on yeah. how frustrating can that be when you dealing and you trying like you know we hoopers yeah. first and foremost we we know our body and we want to get ourselves healthy yeah. and get ourselves back to what we could do what we know we can yeah. do and until we could do that it ain't nothing to say because <laughs> it's lip service because yeah. we just want to get healthy so you yeah. listening to all of this bs go around and all of these Whatever, everybody got thoughts and opinions, yeah. but like, how is it for you to sit there and like you say, you believe in the work, you yeah. doing the work, how is it for you to have to sit there and listen to that outside noise, whether you want to or not? Like you say, yeah. your homeboys come to you, you yeah. don't want to like, this is bullshit, yeah. like what you yeah. about? Like was some of it like really like straight up laughable and comical and some of it was it frustrating or how was it for you? A hundred percent, a lot of it was laughable because it was like, if it was true, it would have offended me. Right. But it ain't true, so it's like, damn, like, this is crazy. Like, it gave me a different perspective, like, seeing stuff on the internet. Like, damn, you cannot believe everything you see. Like, nah, I really know so I like, can't believe so it. So, like, part of it was, like, funny. You know, part of it was frustrating, but, like, it was just crazy because people was talking about, like, mental issues, this, that, and third. And I'm like, yeah, if y'all, like, if y'all know what I'm going through, I'm still out here hooping. Like, I don't even care. I'm still out here hooping. I'm doing whatever I got to do to right. make a free throw. Like, I don't care about it. around um, Million, like a whole bunch of people like I don't know how many people can do that you right. know mm -hmm. so but like at the same time I also realized like the like I got to take care of my body because like at the end of the day the only person that's going to take care of me is me yeah. so like I learned a lot of stuff through that process but at the same time like it almost was like I didn't want to say anything because it's like why would I entertain something that isn't true because right. then that would make it seem like it's, it's true. Yeah. Life into it. <laughs> you feel yeah. me? So it was like uh, my main focus is getting healthy so I can do what I love and that's play basketball. So that's all I was worried about. I didn't really care about what people were saying. I didn't entertain what people were saying. No, and it was hard at times because it was like I want to tell people, you know, yeah. you know, you really what's going on, you yourself, know. Yeah. But it's like at the same time, it don't matter to me because I know what's going on and that's all that matters because I, I just want to hoop. Did you feel the organization was was being supportive? Did you, uh, feel, did you feel they fed into what man. everybody say a little bit? <laughs> it could have been better. It, it was it was you know I had my supports and stuff like that you know and I'm thankful for the Sixers organization and everything they did for me. But I don't know it was a it was a weird situation you yeah. know and and like again I understand that it's a business and I and again I understood I understand now like the business and in and outs of everything. So like again I was just worried about. I was thankful to be able to be moved to somewhere where uh, I had a second chance and an opportunity to, yeah, to grow. Believe, and, and you know, they they wanted to win. I, I wish I had a chance to to, to help them because I really feel like I could have helped them, you know, win if they were patient and you know, let me get healthy. But at the same time, I'm I'm thankful for everything that they did for me and and everything worked out good. Watching you in college, like you was a bucket. Yeah. 
Like, so I couldn't understand why they were trying to change anything yeah. about your game. I, I, I like, really think I'm that like, was, man, he used to pull up, shoot threes, to have that ball, all man. That. Yeah, but, been. And, and the thing is, I feel like I could have helped Ben a lot because, like, I can create for him where where he can just come downhill. He don't got to dribble. He's coming yeah. off, you know, easy buckets. You know, I'm getting Joel easy buckets. Even with them going under, I'm getting Joel the easiest points he probably getting. You yeah. know, easy dump off stuff like that. So. I feel like you like like I realize it's about situation as well. You know, you have like you said, you have some coaches that put guys in a certain box and, you know, they can do way more. So it just didn't work out. It wasn't, you know, what they had planned and it was cool. Just tell us about the perseverance of you you uh going through injuries and what's the mindset so some of these cats that, that are getting the injury and, and thinking that it's all over and their career is all over, yeah. they know they can persevere through that and, For sure. uh, and, and get right. Again, another blessing I had being able to go through, I went through my first year with my shoulder. Um, I think that was probably my toughest injury because I didn't know what it was. And again, you hear all this stuff about, you know, the media, he changes shy, he's doing this, he did. And like not knowing that's true, but also like trying to figure out what's going on. Um, I think that was the toughest part because, you know, once I figure out what I got, I know, like, all right, for instance, my ACL, I knew I got this long to recover. I got to do this, that, and the third, and then I should be good by this. With my shoulder, I didn't know what, what it was, so I couldn't just start working out. You know, I was in the gym continuing to work out, which was actually making it worse. Mm -hmm. And so when I found out, you know, what it was, TOS with, with the nerve damage and, like, understanding I could do rehab, um, that was my next focus, you know, and I had to understand to take it day by day and not look at the big picture because doing that, you know, you can have, you know, those days where you're like, all right, I don't want to do it no more. It's too far away. But mm -hmm. I just really learned how to focus in on the day and win the day and just try to lock in on being the best that day. And then yeah. the next thing you know, it got closer and closer and closer. But, um, again, I think my love for the game really kept me going because mm -hmm. I never – still got a chance to showcase what I wanted to showcase and do what I wanted to do. So I'll be damned if I let an injury stop me from doing that. Straight and up. so that kept me motivated one. But I would just say that uh, just understanding that, you know, better days are ahead and that it's not going to be easy. You know, you're going to have good days. You're going to have bad days. But, you know, setting a goal for yourself and understanding that you can get there with the work that you put in. And that's the biggest thing. One of the things that I marvel at, like I, I – being part of the broadcast team for the Magic, right? You look at it's crazy because you're in you're in year five, six, six. I think you're in year yeah. six. He's in, no, it's, this is crazy what I'm about to say though. He's in year six, and me and Dante, we doing the game. Da -da. The man hasn't played 200 games yeah. yet. <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? Because of injuries, it says a lot about how hard you work, what you fought through, the perseverance, the determination. So just just talk about that in the in the in the grand scope of things. Like that's amazing to be only 200 games, but to have this level of talent and be doing this well and doing being this impactful for your team. It's been my whole life, man. I feel like it's been the same story. Like we just talked about me being cut from JV. Yeah, I only had two years to play varsity, so like. I'm where I'm most comfortable at being an underdog, not being like everybody, you know, rah rah and this that and third. Don't get me wrong, I like I love the support and everything, but like I strive off the doubt and the hate and the the people saying I can't can't do it. And like you said, like I also understand I'm grateful for where I'm at because it could be way worse, and I yeah. also could could not be playing right now. So like I take the good and I and I'm thankful for it and I and I give all the glory to God, but I also understand like. I have so much room that I can grow, and that's what keeps me going because I really feel like there is no ceiling. Like I can, like I can get stronger. Like I'm doing, what I'm doing now. I can still shoot better. I still like it's so much stuff that I can continue to to do. Like, and that's what keeps me going because I still feel like my IQ for the game is like at a very high level. But I still can can continue to make my teammates better, be a better defender, everything. So. That's one of the things that I love about us being able to have this podcast and bring who we want on because I feel like people like you are important. It's cool to get Shaq, Kobe, yeah. whoever, you know, the, the super, super, super duper duper star, but like a person like you is as important as anybody because you you stand for and you represent like, hey, everything ain't always going to go the way that everybody wanted to go. Mm -hmm. We all can't be D-Wade and get a farewell tour exactly. on the way out and this and mm -hmm. that, but like, look, 
I'm not out of here. I'm over. not done. You <laughs> yeah. know what I'm saying? Like it's not over. I'm, yeah. I'm still. My story exactly. still continues, and it's regardless of how if it's how you guys want it or not, it's a success story. Exactly. And that's what it's gonna be. Mm-hmm. So I, I love that part that you represent that, and that you know what I'm saying. That's the that's the you know what I'm saying the way that you persisted and, and, and persevered to be on, and, and you exist because of that. Because that's dope to me. Yeah, I appreciate that. How refreshing was it to, you know, for your next destination to be a place like Orlando where you were able to come here, like you said, take your time to do what you need to do. And then when you came back, I was there. I remember yeah. it. it was the embrace, was the ovation, yeah. the, the love for you. Like, how was yeah. that for you to experience that in contrast to what you had just gone through? It was dope. And, and don't get me wrong. I think Philly fans, you know, Still supporting me crazy. Oh, no, like, they, like, they, they like down. Standing ovation. Like, it was also, don't get me wrong, it was the, the people that was crazy and yeah, said what they said, but like, ruined it for the men. Again, I played hard and I did what I had to do, and they love people that play hard for them. So, like, they did their thing, but coming here was like all open arms, you know, very laid back. People ain't running up to you. Did, you know, they, they let you be who you are, and like, it was just dope, you know, and, and also coming here and being able to help the team win and, and mm-hmm. just do certain things, that makes it even better. So, like, again, just building the love that I have here and, you know, the open arms and how supportive everybody is here is really, really dope. And it's dope to see the crowd just continue to build, you know, even with us getting peed and, like, the pushes that we're making now. It's, it's fun. It makes you want to play even harder to, to see the city go crazy. So. How you feel about that facility y'all got, man? Like you, you was here before. It was yeah. here, so you, you like me, you know yeah. that we really ain't need nothing new. We was already top tier yeah. around this league yeah. anyway. Like I yeah. don't know where this came from, but thank you, like yeah. God, like, yeah. like, like when you saw what was really going on, could you believe it? Like, cause nah. you know you're not, you're not one to you. You've been around the league, yeah. you've been in some other places, yeah. cities, yeah. so like to see. Yeah. What they did, like how were how in awe and wild were you walking in there, like locker rooms to the to everything, just the, all the amenities and the whole the whole setup is just nah, that's crazy. Immaculate. That is like, nah, I ain't never seen nothing like it. It's like, again, it just shows you how invested they are into us. I, mm-hmm. I feel like, especially like, like you said, already having kind of some nice stuff. They, I feel like they want us to be able to. Uh, be able to stay here and be able to have everything we need here and like the facility really is crazy like it's like I don't know it's kind of like you damn it you want your house to look like that almost like, <laughs> yeah, <it's right> <laughs> like when I say ridiculous yeah you got everything name you, something everything they need. got it cryo chambers plunge pools under underwater <laughs> treadmills they got anything yeah. you could think sleep they got a whole room yeah, like sleep a sleep lounge boy hyperbaric like bear chamber you got everything <laughs> yeah hyper bed nice. man listen it's nice Ooh, the locker room walk though in, walk in uh, talking about locker room yeah, yeah walk in big boy like study yeah. what you hear me yeah Woo. Yeah, you definitely feel good you don't be rushing to get up out of there spare no expense <laughs> you hear me <laughs> How does it feel for your presence to be on a team, your presence to be on a franchise? Like you can tell like when you're in the game, the pace that you run and what you yeah. do is different than what they have on on the court with going through all the stuff that yeah. you, you done went through. Like how did that feel? It feel good, man, because I, I honestly feel like I'm 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 very valuable, man. I feel like I honestly make everybody on the floor better. Yeah. Um again, like I, I feel like almost to a fault where like I'm trying to help my teammates play so well that I like miss out opportunities for myself. Yeah. So like that's something that I also learned now, like understanding that there's a time for me to go get it and there's a time for me to take over, but it's also a way to take over the game with not just me scoring, you know, it's, yeah. it's ways to, to play defense to help my teammates game get going. Man. Yeah, you know, so like being that point guard and understanding that like, that's what it's all about. Like I want to be known as a winning player, and I think that I'm I'm showing that now, and I'm I'm glad that I'm getting the, you know you know some of the recognition for it because like that's that's all I care about is winning, and that's all I've always cared about. So I think like as long as I take care of that, like everything that's supposed to come for me is gonna come, and like that's the way like I kind of came up like trying to do good for others, and I always you know come out fine. So again, uh, it feels good for for like not only like my teammates to feel that, but like, you know, I feel like a lot of people are starting to see that. How was it to see a, a a kid from Seattle be the number one pick and say that like, oh man, I used to watch all your games <laughs> coming up yeah, and watch them. It's crazy. Going to the game. Yeah, it's, it's, he's, it's crazy. He's the number one pick and he's on the team and seeing you and T. Ross. Yeah. And, you know, I think, I think it's dope. You know, again, I think it's like, 
a unique experience. Well, for me, I'm this is my second time playing on a team with a number one pick. I played with Ben, and now I'm playing with Pete. So, like, yeah. I also understand what he's going through in a sense. So, like, I feel like me being what I've been through, I think he understands, like, yo, he has somebody real that's not, like, that also has been a number one pick. So, like, I feel like he knows that, like, it's somebody that he can talk to and, yeah. uh, and, and you know, a real hooper. And then also having the Seattle ties, it's just, like, it makes it even better. So, uh, again, a, a real hooper right there, you know, he's going to be – Something like real special. He already is something <laughs> oh, special, yeah, but yeah. like, like as the game continues to slow down for him, like I'm super excited. I'm you know honored that I have a chance to be able to be a point guard that can help him right now because like, yeah. it, it's 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 sometimes you go on like most of the time when you top pick you go on a team that's not that good and you go you know you can learn how to play bad basketball. So like, yeah. I'm just glad I have a chance to, you know to give him my little bit of like jewels and stuff like that to help him become like one of the best players that he can be. Speaking on that, you saying like being drafted and having a chance to learn how to play bad basketball. I feel like Coach Mosley has been great for y'all. Like I was, I you know, I didn't know how he was going to be as a head coach when he first got here, but I feel like he's done more than proven himself as a that he has a great future as a head coach. And I feel like the biggest thing that lets me as a former player know that I look at you guys, how y'all respond to him how he, you know, how he's been relatable to y'all and how he's been able to get y'all to respond to him and to play how he wants to play. Because, I mean, the one thing we all know, we see teams that are undisciplined yeah. and whatever, don't listen to the, We see that every day. Y'all see that as players when y'all go out there and we see it as former players and now analysts and commentators and, and fans of the game. Mm -hmm. It's not easy for a coach, especially a young, new coach, new head coach, never before head coach, to come in and get a team – to assume an identity and also go out there and literally compete their ass off for him night in and night out. So tell me what what coach has done to you know to kind of get the team to be all in on him because I mean we as fans, we as anybody that's watching, we see that you guys go out there and y'all get some wins because we play harder than yeah, that. You know what absolutely. I'm saying? And like that's 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 something to be said for a team and their coach that has them playing like that. Man, I think the biggest thing with Mosin, he kind of, like I even told him, he reminds me of Coach Romar a little bit as far mm. as like, he care about us as people. Like, right. it's not just about who for him. Like, don't get me wrong, he cares about winning, he hates losing, but he more wants us to be great young men. And like, especially with a team like us, we got a lot of young guys. It's like, that always makes you feel better as a person, you know, coming in knowing that a guy isn't just worried about winning or just talking basketball all the time you know he's asking how you doing he's worried about how your family doing you know stuff mm -hmm. like that so like I think that's a big part about it but he also has a good combination of like getting on us but like understand we have a young team so making it fun like it's not all drill 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 it's like a, a good combination of come in and get your work in lock in for right now and then you can go enjoy and do what you got to do but we got to take care of business so um I think it's all those combination but and then also, like, a couple of guys like myself, Gary, you know, guys who played for different coaches and, and understanding, like, we got a coach that rocks with us. Like, right. You know what I'm saying? So we got to protect yeah. we got to protect him. So, like, we, we stress that a lot, you know, to our teammates as That's far as, good, like, man. I love to hear understanding that. that, like, yo, we got a brother that, like, is rocking with us. You have been in the league uh, six years now, and uh, you had your first year of game. <laughs> Tell me one of your dunk ons that you remember that always stick in your head or they always send in your DMs. He a big guard too, he didn't have some. Yeah, he didn't have some, especially this year. He didn't have some kabooms, downhill. What's one of the ones that you remember that always stick in your head? I had one against Golden State, probably like a few years ago. It was in Golden State and um, I had went through like a pick and roll. And I took off off one foot. I think it was my man Amari Spellman, and I, mm. I I dunked it, and it low key was a foul too. Like I boomed <laughs> it, like and I fell on my back. He and uh, it was it was right before that half. It was a foul. I'm telling you, I gotta pull up the video. It was a foul. Yeah, I need to see. And uh, I fell on my back, but it was it was nasty, right? And it was it was right for half. I, I I know it was a foul because I fell on the ground. I got up and walked to the bench. I thought that I was like the quarter. It was halftime. Everybody was walking out to the thing. I had to sit down for a second. I was kind of messed up. Yeah, I was like, yeah. I was like you oh, boom, that, that wasn't even a foul. Oh, yeah. It hurt too, but it was it was nice. That was probably like one of my best. Between that man, one, and I had Taters to put back. Mash. I had to put back this year against uh, Randall, uh, oh, the New York one. Yeah, I was saying that. Yeah, yeah. 
just tell me and, and talk about how important that you know you being in the community and doing the different things. I saw you won the award yeah. for being the biggest magic player that's in the community, and they they do that every year since since I've been here. They always give an award, a community award for who's doing the most in the community, and for you to win that. I know personally that you, you know what I'm saying, that you care and that you doing a lot in the community. So tell me, where did you get that to be in your community like that? And how does that make you feel when you doing those events and you impacting these people in the ways that, that, that only we know how yeah. it's impacting them because we seeing it? That's something my mom instilled to me since, and my sister since we were young. Like, even when we didn't have nothing, like every Thanksgiving, every Christmas, we would sign up to go give away turkeys at the, at the center. So um, it's something that we just did because, you know, it's something that we love to do. Like we feel good, you know, being able to help someone. And as soon as I got to the league and I was able to, you know, my life changed. Uh, that was one of my biggest things I wanted to make sure I, I did was make sure I gave back as much as I could because um, I came from nothing and I didn't really have that many pros that came back or just people in general that came back and just, you know, looked out for our community. So um, it's just something that's like second nature to me. It actually like brings a, a joy to my heart, you know, and yeah. I, I had to learn to, you know, cause I always used to go and, and, and actually, like you said, be there to be able to give, give back. But like when I started to realize how much of, you know, just me smiling and me talking to people, just saying hello and saying, have a good day, how yeah, much it changed, me. you know, their lives, uh, it, it made it mean even more to me. And then especially having my kids now, you know, something that I want to instill yeah. in them as well. Wow. So, I'm just, it's something that, like, I'm, I feel good and I don't feel like it's something that I have to do or something that I want any type of recognition for, but it's something that, like, it actually feels good to do. So, uh, as long as I'm able to do it, I'm going to continue to do it. If you had to pick your favorite three players from D.C., you your favorite three, not your top three, your your favorite three, the one that caught your eye, who would be <sighs> them three? Dang. Kevin Durant. Bees. Beasley. These get slept on a lot. I probably had to say, damn. Cause look, franchise. Yeah, man. I was about to say, look, but I ain't really watched. But I, you know, he 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 worked. I used to watch a lot of. You know, I hear about him a lot. You know, you know who else I hear about a lot? That 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 Lim Bias. Oh man, mm -hmm. see that's my mom a different actually. Level. My that's mom was like level. closer to him, so like I would have to say them three. Yeah, yeah. Talk about what you know and what you heard about Mike Beasley, because to me, he's one of the anomalies of the league and of basketball period, because he is the true definition of a walking bucket yeah, if absolutely. I've ever seen one. Like, absolutely. real talk, Mike Beasley is cold. Yeah, lefty. What are you, like 6'9"? Six, 6'9", nine? Six, nine, <laughs> like, at least. Legit the perfect, like, yeah, he probably taller than that. And he but, might like, be 6'10". Like, right? Stocky, and too. Stocky, yeah. Bill, he not. Handle, shoot it. Got everything. And whatever Dunk you both hand, with, yeah, with and, the shit. Yeah, with the bullshit gonna talk trash, but, like, just a, a pure hooper, like, no matter how he coming to the gym, he gonna come get buckets. Like, it don't matter. Like, and he love, like, you can tell he's a guy that just love the game, you know. Obviously, situations are, are, are how they are, but... He still love the game, man. Somebody that loves the hoop and has a lot of respect, you know, back home. But uh, yeah, I will say probably one of the, the most gifted hoopers I've seen. You know, hoop, I, I still, sure. in my heart of hearts, believe in the right situation, right scenario. Absolutely, he giving people gravy For sure. right now. For sure, I watch him on <laughs> social sure. media. He still be playing now in Miami. Gyms, yeah, he be out in Miami, <laughs> busting fools yeah. up. I'm talking about giving fools yeah. the for real yeah. business. Tough and I ain't got no doubt that if somebody gave him an opportunity, bro, and he was yeah. in the right scenario and people kept things in order, like, yeah. bro. Absolutely. Bees is a problem, bro. I, ain't, I I'm telling you, you people, we go as high as D-Wade. D-Wade, yeah. Hall of Fame about to be, and he will speak yeah. on it. Yeah. I'm telling you, that boy was a goddamn nah, that's issue. Facts. That's Buckets. Facts. That's facts. Start, bench, trade. You have to start one, you have to bench one, you have to trade one. Uh, Jason Kidd. Uh, Gary Payton. And... Penny. Penny. You have to start one, you have to bench one, trade one. So Jason Kidd, Gary Payton, Damn. and Penny. That Who would you start name being? changed. Yeah, game. that made it different. Damn. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a, me, I'm going to start Penny. See? See? I knew it. I knew it. I knew it in my heart. I'm going to go ahead and I put uh, 
Pay you nothing too. I mean, Ooh, bitch. big homie. Yeah, yeah, you you, you trading kid? Yeah. Yeah. Big homie wins. I wouldn't, I wouldn't like that, but I, not, I can live with that. Trade. We gonna we gonna put them on yeah, the bed. I can live with that though. When you got the bag, like you said, you got blessed. You went, you went number one. Yeah. So you know, none of us ain't. Saying <laughs> that's like you went, and it's a different era where yeah. y'all money a little nah, 100%, bit, little 100%. bit, little bit yeah. different. So crazy. I don't want to hear about. I, Lord knows we know you took care yeah, of mom you know, mama and straight sister. Stay straight. Yeah. Crib, whatever. That's lovely. God bless you. Yeah. <laughs> Forget anybody's opinion. When yeah. you got home from getting this, you felt damn good. Like this was I've been <laughs> working my ass off, and I like yeah. this all legit. I did this. Yeah. Like how did what did you do? It's cars. It's probably my two cars because you know first thing I was, Phantom. Yeah, you know now nah, I got a Wraith. Nope. Mm. Got the Wraith. I got. I'm, I had yeah, G wagon, wagon first. Now nah, you good? Say yeah, yeah. I had a G wagon first. One, right? Yeah. I, I had the G wagon first. Cause I see, I'm gonna tell you yeah. how I put it together. Cause we neighbors. He don't know we neighbors. We neighbors. He stay in my old neighborhood, which is my yeah. new neighborhood is right behind the old neighborhood. I didn't call him a couple yeah. times going to the game. I'm about to get there to do the little pro, the little sure. broadcast, and I see the black and white. I said, I see yeah. you. I don't know. I, I then one time I saw the I saw the silhouette. I saw the dreads. I say, okay, now I can narrow shit down. We neighbors. You ain't even know that. We all neighbors. That's love. Right around the corner. Man, listen, bro. We appreciate, appreciate you putting up love, on the man, homies, real. man. It's been real, yeah. man. Markel yes, folks, sir. everybody. Washington slash the DMV's own in the building, repping the magic yeah. today. Baller. In City Beautiful. <laughs> <laughs>